Monday and welcome to the box seat. I'm Pete Anthonis. It's good to be here to preview a competitive eight race card from Ascot Racecourse this Saturday. If we have a quick look at the forecast, the weather is mostly sunny and 24 degrees. The rail is in the seven metre position and I'm expecting a good four track. Race one jumps at 12.24. It's the Bruno Otto Viano Memorial Plate over 1200 metres. In our horse and focus, we'll have a look at the last start of specialism. Place coming into the home corner, about to dart up near the inside, followed further back by Jaguar Grey. We've got Dreams the leader though, he's still looking for a run with Specialism, War Saint sticks on We've got Dreams in front, War Saint down the outside, Jaguar Grey Specialism's getting through, she found the needle, eye opening, she's coming she's finishing quickly or she dived It was a good effort late there by Specialism, it was held up for the majority of the straight and when it finally got the gap it really accelerated through it to just win over Jaguar Grey. I'm Expecting probably an easier run in transit from gate three. It has the option of leading if Mayor Dolce doesn't want to, but I'm anticipating they'll probably just take a sit on the outside and sit in the breeze. All things being equal, it's been the most consistent of these two-year-olds. Second pick is the seven, Rocky Path, who just seemed to be a little bit slow away. It was a bit green in the straight, but it was certainly doing its best work late. I think this horse does have a bit of ability, and I'm anticipating with a softer run in transit from six, it just needs that little bit of kind of momentum coming around the corner. It can obviously finish well. Third pick is the five, which is Mere Dolce. Last start was clearly its best performance to date. It managed to jump to the front. It was ridden with intent and ran along at good speed. And if it can do the same here, it will be in the race for a long way. Fourth pick is the three, Angel Whisper, who was just a little bit restrained back in the field for my liking. It jumped well and it didn't really necessarily have any room in the straight either. I think from gate seven, it can probably position itself one out, one back in this field. Race one, I'll put the one on the top specialism from seven Rocky Path, five Mere Dolce and the three Angel Whisper. Race two at Ascot jumps at 1.04. It's a tab touch, better your bet handicap over 1600 metres. And we'll have a look at the last start performance of Friaresque. But it's Maginica approaching the 250, a length and a half to two clear. Dutch spy war god. Maginica showing the persuader, approaching the 100, still clear from Dutch spy. And then war god, midnight sky, but it's Maginica, much too good. Uh, that's a great front running ride by McNaught. She came away. Yes, Friar Esk has had more chances than probably most horses should be afforded, but it is running consistently. And what we didn't see there in the vision was what happened early in the race. The horse jumped okay. It was restrained back to last and then, then even when it was running last it was trying to race a bit keenly and had to be just checked a few times. I think from gate three it can probably position itself in a little bit more of a forward position in this small field and Chris Parnham's jumping on board and he is absolutely flying at the moment. There just seems to be a real lack of speed in this race and I think that might suit Friaresque down to the ground. So it's on top for me from the two touch of silver. Speaking of horses that are just going really consistently you cannot fault this horse's recent performance. I think gate five should be able to get itself into a good position, should have all momentum coming around the corner. It's just whether or not it will have the same sprint without much tempo up front. Third pick is the one proper ante, so I've been expecting a bit of improvement from the last couple of starts and it's delivered. I'm not sure if this will be the most suitable race. I think it might want that little bit extra speed up front, but certainly the horse is going well and you can't fault those recent performances. And then fourth pick is the five Diablery, who is finally met finding a race without special reward to contend with. But there's just a small query jumping from 1,200 metres up to 1,600. I would probably have preferred another start in between just to boost the, the miles and the legs, so to speak. But having said that, the horse will probably find itself in the breeze and put itself on speed. So in race two, four on top for me, Friaresque from the two, touch of silver, one proper antis and five Diablery. Race three at Ascot jumps at 144. It's the Ray Del Menico 90th birthday handicap over 1400 metres. And our horse in focus will have a look at the last start of Supreme Force. To sneak home along the rail. Turbo Power on the outside got his head in front of Mrs. Brown's boy. Pin son Harry Thomas trying to bullock into the clear. Little Fish down the outside comes Settlers Creek with a run. At the 100, Settlers Creek, Little Fish have come together. Settlers Creek reaches the lead though, and Settlers Creek has given as a party the third leg of a trip. Been following Supreme Force since its trial to begin this preparation, and really it's had no luck at all in all three starts. The last two, it's only beaten one horse home, but there has been excuses in both of those occasions. And I think from gate five in the smaller field, they'll try and ride the horse in a more positive fashion. We saw that last preparation at Belmont. 
and I'm anticipating the horse will either sit in the breeze or one out one back and I think that can change its fortunes around at a bit of an each way price. So it goes on top for me from the three Vilago who really is doing some very special things at the moment, almost running his own races by flopping out the tail, going around the whole field wide, circling them and then just kicking away before the turn. So look, the horse does have its own quirks, that's for sure. But if it can continue at this rate, it will be winning this race or going very close to at least. Third pick is the four sigil. You couldn't have this horse anywhere else to finish second or third. And it's doing that very consistently so far, this prep. Gets blinkers on for something a little bit different. Gate two is probably favourable as well. It could settle a fraction more forward as well if the horse jumps out of the gates clean. And then the fourth pick is the two Peppy Jack. Didn't necessarily get too much joy last start. I'd really like to see this horse ridden to lead as opposed to sitting in the breeze, but it does map once again to probably end up exactly there. In race three, five on top for me, Supreme Force from three Vilago, four Sigil and two Peppy Jack. Race four at Ascot jumps at 2.24. It's the Deb Newton. 50th birthday handicap over 1400 metres and our horse and focus will have a look at the last start of inflation at Ascot. Sigil's getting over towards the inside as well and then I am Spartacus followed further back by Vermont Lady at the 200 though an inflation on the outside it's the leader Sigil down on the inside and here comes I am Spartacus it's starting to rally I am Spartacus comes at inflation inflation I am Spartacus they've gone to the line inflation inflation was well supported it gets the blinkers off and the visors going on because we just saw in that last start it was a little bit green it did a few things wrong but the horse obviously has a fair amount of talent. It returned a personal best performance and staying at the same distance, mapping again quite soft and Chris Parnham sticking. It does tick a lot of boxes for the Darren McAuliffe yard. So I'll stick with inflation once again. It's doing nothing wrong the last couple of starts. Second pick is the one classic pro who returned with a career best performance in what was a high tempo race. I'm not sure it will get the high tempo here once more, but it does get a nice gate from four. There's a bit of uh, versatility there with the horse. It could go maybe a fraction more forward. It could settle back, but it does have a good turn of foot that it just might be exposed as one of those horses that needs a real strong tempo up front. Third pick is the six, which is Forgotten Star. This horse will probably appreciate the slower tempo because it has a really good turn of foot over the last 400. And we saw that both starts so far, this preparation. It was a perfect ride by Emma Stent last start, and she obviously knows the horse well. Fourth pick is the five, Sophie Song, who does seem to perform just a little bit better when it has the ability to settle in the front. It does seem to map there from gate two. It's just a matter of if inflation will take it on and try and take the lead off it. But all things being equal, the horse will put itself into the race and can sprint over the last 400 metres. On top in race four is the three inflation from one classic pro, six forgotten star and five Sophie's song.